So the fact of this problem, ladies and gentlemen, um, well, first of all, what do we need to do? What they're asking us to do is determine, or what I'm asking you to do is determine the multiplicity, determine the end behavior, and then determine the real zeros. Now, the real zeros are going to be your x-intercepts. So the first thing let's do, I like to get out of the way. I like to do the easiest part first. I think that kind of makes sense, right? So let's determine what the end behavior is. So the end behavior, remember, is going to be determined by the degree and your leading coefficient. Right? So I look up here and I say, what is my degree? Well, my degree is 4, and my leading coefficient is 5. Now, remember, you're going to have to go back and look at your leading coefficient test. But when you have an even degree and a positive leading coefficient, your graph is going to rise left and rise right. That was in your notes. So you're going to want to rise left and then rise right. Okay? Even degree, positive leading coefficient. So that's your end behavior. Done. Got that out of the way. The next thing is we need to find our real zeros. Remember, ladies and gentlemen, if we're looking for a zero, that is where the graph crosses. That's your x-intercepts. So remember, if we're look, talking about a function, if here's my f of x and here's my x, where it crosses the x-intercept, f of x equals zero. Just like remember we did completing the square x-intercepts, f of x equals zero. The same thing over here. So we do zero equals 5x to the fourth plus 15x squared, right, plus 10. All right, so now we need to solve. Uh, the problems were not limited to you guys factoring. A lot of these are factoring. However, ladies and gentlemen, if you have an opportunity to use the quadratic formula or you want to solve by completing the square, you can also do that as well. Not everything had to be factored. This one probably going to be easiest to factor. But you guys can, there's not limited to one way to solve it. There's multiple ways you can solve it. Can you find the zeros other than factoring? Mm -hmm. You could have completed the square. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's, if it's a quadratic, you could have used the quadratic formula, right? right? Yeah. So, but let's, but well, I'm trying to get you guys a lot with practicing factoring. So, when you first learn factoring, the first thing you learned to do was make it as simple as possible. Factor out what they all have in common, correct? Okay. So let's look at all three of these terms. What do all three of the terms have in common? Five. Five. So let's factor out the five. Okay. Now, here's where I'm going to uh, kind of confuse you to kind of give you a little tip. I can factor it like this, but some of you might not. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to write a little key. I'm going to say x to the fourth equals x squared. x squared equals x. Okay? I'm going to write myself a little key. So you just have the exponent? Huh? Yeah, I mean, you can just say, you can see how this could still be like a quadratic, right? Um, so what I'm going to, like, you know, because you, usually a quadratic is x squared and then the x. So what I'm just going to do is I'm just going to write myself a little key. I'm going to have x to the fourth equal x squared, and I have this equal x. Why would I want to do that? Well, because it might be confusing for me to factor it like that. So I'll do x plus 3 fourths x plus 2. So then I'm going to factor it like this. Okay. Remember I said... That. Now I look at this. Is this factorable? Can you factor that? Yes. Yeah, you can, right? You guys remember? You guys remember going through it? That was like your worksheet, factoring. It's factoring practice. You have to do a little preliminary work to first of all get started, but yeah, you can factor it. So zero equals five, that um, gets that uh, gets eliminated. It's just a factor of five. It's not gonna be a zero. So we can factor this out to zero equals five times. This can be factored out into x plus 2 times x plus 1. Then remember, so now we got to this point, it's factored. Remember to solve, we now have to solve by the zero product property. Remember that was also in your notes. The zero product property states, when you have a product that equals zero, either one of them can equal zero. So you could say x plus 2 equals zero, or x plus 1 equals zero you set them both equal to zero. 
One of them has to equal zero. So you set them both equal to zero. Now I solve. My zeros are x equals two and x equals one. Oh, negative one, right? As you subtract two on both sides, jeez. I should have just showed you the word instead of being lazy. Subtract the two on both sides, subtract the one on both sides, x equals negative one, x equals negative two. Now the last thing, let's talk about multiplicity. It's said about multiplicity. Remember multiplicity had that little exponent with the k? So we go back to our factors and we look at them. What are the exponents of my factors? Little exponent right up there. Oh. Hold on, hold on. I was looking at this, I'm like, this is too easy. I'm making my mistake because I didn't go back. I, I, haven't I didn't show it to this last way. But guys, remember we have our key, right? Right? Yeah. Yeah. This isn't it. This, remember x, is the same thing as what? We transferred, what did we transfer x to? x squared. So I gotta put that back. I can't just say, oh, Right? You gotta be able to put that back in there. Okay, so now I look at this, I subtract two, subtract two. X squared equals negative two. Take the square root. X equals, uh, we haven't talked about complex numbers. So here, I'm gonna have a negative one as well x squared equals the square root of negative 1. It is going to be plus or minus. Um, and for this problem, I am just going to leave it right now as no real, um, no real roots, because they're going to be imaginary numbers. We haven't talked about complex numbers yet. So I'm just going to leave. Huh? Yeah, we're going to deal about i's, but we're going to deal with that in like next chapter. So until we get to that, I'm just going to leave it as no real roots. Can I see that? Yep, I just need to write it, and then I'll move away. Yes, it is, but we're not talking about I though right now. I know you guys, some of you might have to think, but we'll talk about I in the next class period. Yes? So if they can't, if, so if you can't take the square root of the number, it's no real root? If you can't take the square root of a negative number, oh. you're going to have no real root. But why is it like, why do you have LLs and stuff after the x2 x? Remember, I transferred x to the fourth to x squared? Yeah. Right? Uh -huh. Well, you just can't. Do it like that. You gotta make sure you gotta make sure you transfer it back over. So you have to just do it x to the fourth. Alright. So this is really x squared times this is really x squared times um, x squared plus two times x squared plus one. Right? Yeah. Because okay. What's this? If you did x squared plus two times x squared plus one, those two multiply to give you x squared to the fourth plus three x squared plus two. Okay. They give you this multiplied gives you that. But some of it might be hard for you to see that, so I said you can write a key, but be careful, make sure you put that key back in. So, so we could do it that way without putting yeah, you don't have to do the key, you could have just transferred it with x. You could have just wrote your factors there and then set them both equal to zero. Okay. Don't the same. Just want to give you guys an opportunity to change it if you need to. No, your multiplicity is going to be one, but there's no real solutions right now, so we're not really talking about your multiplicity is going to be one. I'll do another so example. Take the multiplicity from the final equation, yeah. not the right. Your multiplicity is on your factors. If you look at your factors, that's going to be your multiplicity. We'll do another problem with the multiplicity. You guys will see. Like that.